so so we have to talk about it um the nintendo conference yeah um so i'm gonna go over the things that i'm excited for real quick okay um okay i'm done uh would you like to go Dirk? <laughs> No, uh, but no, in, in all honesty, uh, there there was some. I, I don't, I don't get the uh, the new Mario Rabbids. I don't, I don't get it. Um, it I, it's just a fun new way of playing something. It looked a lot like XCOM to me, so I think it's just a fun way. And that's not my game, so I'm not going to play it. But what, it's uh, what you thought. You thought the Mario and Rabbids game look like XCOM? I that was the impression I got. Okay. <laughs> it was XCOM to me. I don't know. Maybe sure. you're thinking of the wrong game. You probably are. I don't think that's the right game. I'm talking about the one that has the Mar- like has the Mario characters and it has the rabbits from a uh... Yeah, the rabbits. I know. I know oh, that okay. maybe my XCOM. I... Maybe I'm thinking of something else then. Yeah, maybe. I don't I don't know. Then Are you yeah, talking yeah. about like XCOM Navy Seals like that game? No. Oh, no. No, okay. is that Maybe, what you were thinking? I meant? That, that was what I thought you were talking about. Was the oh, XCOM no, like military turn, games? No, like that turn-based, uh, cover-based. Oh um, right, okay. I know. Okay, sure. It, it, am I? Was I right then or no? Uh, I didn't. I mean, on, honestly, I saw the concept for it, and I didn't go much past that. I'm not gonna okay. lie. Like with no, the Mario and Rabbits, I was like, eh. Once I saw that rabbit dressed up like Peach, I was like, I'm kind of, I'm done. <laughs> I'm out. Roll play. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, I'm so, I'm so confused right now. Um, In multiple ways. Yeah, but the I will say what I am extremely excited for with Nintendo is that they're making a new Pokemon RPG. I think that that's. I'm, yeah, I'm excited for three things, and that was one of them. Yeah, and Pokemon Tournament looks okay. Um, I have never played the original one. Yeah, me neither. Um. But it does look like fun. I'm not going to say it doesn't look fun by any means, but uh, I'm more excited about the uh, the core RPG that, that they're going to bring to the Switch. Yeah. Um, because that's... I mean, th- I've been hoping for a decent Pokemon RPG that isn't on handheld. Um, because I feel like they could do a lot of really cool stuff with that. And mm-hmm. I don't want it to be Pokemon Dungeon whatever, that one thing that they came out with that was just terrible. Oh, um, yeah. or like yeah i don't i don't want any of that stuff i just want the pokemon rpg um and i think that that's going to be really cool yeah i was excited for that i think super mario odyssey looks really cool the creativity in that was awesome and i hope it's on the scale i got the impression the feel like when i saw and played uh nintendo the mario 64 yeah um I got that feel from it. That was what I was excited about there. And the third thing was more just Nintendo's policy to like, hey, we're going to bring good third-party games here. We're going to make that happen. Like Rocket League, uh, Skyrim, I guess. I mean, as – as yeah. I mean, that, I that was a weird one to me. Wherever I want to. But I'm not sure how – I can't buy that game for like the fifth time. I guess that's just my policy at this point. So Yeah. Um, I'm – I'm uh, – so – I think that it's really cool that they're doing that with uh, third-party yes. games. I'm just not sure how well the the Switch is going to be able to handle some of the third-party games that weren't necessarily designed for for Nintendo. That's my only thing. No, that's true. But it did sound like from when the Switch came out initially, they said that the our core architecture seemed like it was very well set up for third-party options. And the developers have time. I don't think... I really think Nintendo wants to be sure things go well, and I don't. I have a feeling they're not going to rush things. I mean, obviously they want hit sales timetables and all that stuff, but I have a feeling that Nintendo's going to go over quality over quantity um, and have some real substance. So I, I have faith in them in that because Nintendo, this is a bold move by Nintendo in general with the Switch. I think it, they've done a fantastic job. Um, I mean, I want one. I know you want one. Yeah. Um, pretty much everyone I know wants one. No one owns one, well, except for one guy, but. Um, the one person that, that owns a Switch in the whole whole country. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for that. I think they'll do well. Uh, I'm not holding, I mean, I'm not going to play Skyrim on there over on my PC. I mean, unless I'm traveling on the plane and I have to, you know, I have to do stuff in the Assassin's Brotherhood. But other than that, with the Dark Brotherhood, but yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, what, one last thing I want to just touch on is Metroid Prime 4. That's pretty yes. cool. Yeah, that, I'm that not is... a, I never really played Metroid myself, so I have a friend who's excited for it, but that's about it. I'm excited to see what it's about, and I'll leave it at that. That's that's a good way to do it. But uh, I think that that generally wraps up our, our basic uh, E3 coverage. Reactions. Not really. I have a couple more to oh, go over. Okay, no, d- then Dirk, you go for it. Yeah, I don't, ha- I, I don't I, have Dirk's notes, so I apologize. Yeah. No, no, you're fine, man. I like I said, we didn't we didn't talk about this beforehand. So, um, I'm gonna now see we did ours in a different format than I took my notes in, so I'm gonna jump around as a little bit. Um, oh, go for it. For me, I'm excited about the new Call of Duty because it's World War II. I'm so glad. I'm excited that they listened to their fans, and it wasn't hyper boost, power slide, amputate all your limbs five, but we have a new World War II shooter. I watched some videos of it. It sounds great. It looks cool. They did really minimal stuff to add some of the new uh, advances they made. Like instead of having specialists, you know, you've got your I think divisions, and like that give you like a real small trait that lets you help you a little bit, but not you know being crazy. But it's World War II, so I'm excited for that. Um, I'm I think they're gonna do well, and I'm definitely gonna wait as much as I want to be excited. I, I've been hurt too many times. Yeah. I'm not gonna go down that so- bridge again. Yeah, so I want I really want to be excited about the new Call of Duty because I really did love World at War. Um, oh yeah, that was my game. Yeah, I love World at War. I loved uh, even Modern Warfare One, Modern Warfare Two. Of course, uh, I did like those ones, but I'm I'm hesitant. I'm, excited. To, I'm yeah, hesitant to be excited about it just because you you know it looks like World War Two now, but then it's going to be like oh well, what it is is we're linking. Um, like the person's mind from the future to his ancestors in the past, Assassin's like Assassin's Creed. Creed. Yeah. <laughs> and then it's going to be like, but, but you took with you your laser guns and your jet yeah. pack and you're going to like get there and you're going to be like, Oh, it's world war two, but I'm flying. Yeah. And then exactly. it's, gonna, and then it's going to be like calling your mech. And then it's a mech warrior is going to come in and opt, Optimus prime is going to be there. And, Dude, I a hundred percent. Iron Man flies in. Iron Man <laughs> flies in, and you get in the suit. And... Dude, oh, one of the kill streaks is calling in Star Lord, and he just does a yeah. bombing run for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that that's just what that's what I fear with that because you always think that Call of Duty is looking out for the fans, and then you just get in there, and you're like, wow, this is the dumbest thing. Or it's gonna be like. Oh hey, you bought the game. If you want the World War Two part of it, it's going to be another thirty dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's going to be like you can walk around in this futuristic society and shoot a gun at like a pigeon or something, and then it's going to be another thirty dollars if you want to go back and to World War Two, and then another thirty dollars if you want any guns, and yeah. then fifteen dollars to unlock multiplayer. So yeah. it's going to be, you know, I just I don't want to be that excited about it. But keep keep going with your list. Where where are you going next? Um, really quick about that. I just hope they do zombies well. I'm a huge zombies yeah. storyline fan. I'm not great at the gameplay itself, but I do enjoy the story, and I'm a huge fan of all the content creators who do that. Bring so back I, the old zombies. Like I'm the, hoping that the old way of doing it. But I hope there's a strong narrative piece. That's my hope. Yeah. Well, like all, all um, the DLC, uh, all the DLC maps for World at War. That, were, I'm okay they, with that. they were awesome and all the easter eggs that you could find that was yeah. that was classic classic zombies yeah that was fun um i'm excited for wolfenstein 2 i have not played the original but wolfenstein 2 looked crazy enough to be cool and that's kind of what i'll leave it at that cool um talked about anthem already um do, do, do. I was disappointed. I'm going to kind of transition now. I was disappointed that there was no The Last of Us 2 information. Yeah. I'm a huge Last of Us fan. I really enjoyed it. I played it. I got the Platinum on the PlayStation 3. Um, I almost had it on the PlayStation 4 before I kind of stopped playing the PlayStation. Um, I found out why, though, there wasn't because they wanted to be sure the Naughty Dogs uh, guys doing Uncharted had their chance to shine. So yeah. it wasn't like there was no news to give. It was the fact they wanted to be sure the other studio had a chance to really showcase, or the other division or whatever you call it, had a chance to show off their game, which makes sense. That's coming out later this year. So I was really disappointed in see it, but at least now I know why. So that, that helps a bunch. 
my biggest disappointment that I had with E3 was something that I didn't think was going to happen anyways, but I really wanted it to happen no matter what, uh, was uh, I wanted to see some Borderlands 3 stuff. I wanted oh, to see, yeah. like, I wanted proof of life. Yeah, like, because no, I know true. that they're making it, but I, I didn't think that we were going to see anything, but it would have been cool just to get, like, a little teaser, like, maybe no. just, like, a teaser of the story or something. Um, no, you're you're right. I actually, I forgot about that. That wasn't my wish list, and I, for, I forgot about that until you said that. I wanted to see something, even if it was, like, a poster. Yeah, because one, once Borderlands 3 gets announced, uh, my whole life is going to change, and then once that game comes out, it's just going to be shut down channel. We're not doing anything anymore. I'm just I'm just gonna play Borderlands for the rest of my life. I won't yeah. I won't eat or sleep. Just play Borderlands. Yeah, you guys don't know. Mike has a serious Borderlands habit. Like I, he got me into Borderlands, and we'd be up like three or four in the morning playing Mad Moxie's Rumble yeah. Pit. Yeah, Border, Borderlands One. We must have had at least a hundred and fifty hours. Oh, in, minimum. In that game. And then minimum. Borderlands yeah. Two. I think I oh, owned yeah. it on three different uh, platforms at one point. Yeah, but Borderlands has to be my favorite franchise uh, that has ever been made in any any game. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm just I'm ready for for Borderlands three to come out or at least be announced. Uh, I would like to know, you know, what the story is going to be about, who the new villain is going to be, you know, like a little bit maybe about like uh, classes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I agree. I I'm mean, I'm not, I'm not looking for skill trees. I'm not looking for, like, gameplay. I just kind of wanted something. something. Like, yeah. I, or at least, like, a little video of the, of uh, what's-his-face from Gearbox. Uh, yeah. Randy Pitchford just being like, oh, hey, uh, so we're here working on Borderlands 3. Here's a sketch that I wrote down on a napkin. Like, yeah. I would have been okay with that. but That I drew this morning. Yeah. <laughs> in the but, bathroom. Yeah. In the muffin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I swear that that's chocolate muffin. That's nothing else. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just I was hoping for something. Yeah, all we got was a chocolate muffin. Yeah. Um, other thing I was disappointed about, I'm actually less disappointed now, was the news about the paid mods from Bethesda for like Skyrim and Fallout Four. Um, I'm disappointed in the fact that they're going about it. They're going about paid mods again, um, though I. The way they're doing it and the fact that they're kind of curating them and they're going to be like being sure that they work and they're going to mainly start as in-house, I'm okay with. Um, first off, I believe that if you do extra work, you should be paid for it. If you're modding yeah. a game, I think you should be supported um, through whatever avenue is possible. And I'm I'm as guilty as the next person for getting a mod and not paying them for it. Um uh, Mainly because, you know, you try out, like, a bunch of mods and you kind of forget one. And then, you know, you just kind of go on with your life because you're happy you got it. Well, then my, my <laughs> thing, too, is they deserve to be paid for it if that's what they're looking for. If if you yeah. want to make something and put it out there for free, I'm not going to say, like, oh, no, here, here, take this $5 bill because <laughs> cause I feel like you deserve it. Like, yeah. I, I think it's more of a if you if you put something out there and that's your intention is that you want to be compensated for it then which, if i if i enjoyed it then yes yeah which isn't bad but i want to be also be able to have a chance to try it out type thing so yeah. we'll, i guess we'll we'll know more i have not looked into it in depth i saw real brief highlights of the talk there and read a little bit about it um so i understand the, the desire to get compensated again i think it's fair i think if someone wants to be paid for something they should be paid i hope it doesn't exclude them like the content creator from having that mod maybe in other places, which I'm sure it will. Um, but I guess as long as Bethesda is going to accept some sort of responsibility and technical support for people who don't know what they're doing and they're trying to do a mod and they're going to help them fix their PC or their console if and likely when something goes wrong, then that built-in support, I think I, I can understand the additional cost for it. Yeah. But if it's going to be like, hey, we reskinned this crab for $6 – um, I, I don't know about that business. Yeah, I'm not. I'm uh, not. I'm not I mean, paying for any for any crab market, skins. Yeah, the market will dictate what sells and what doesn't, and how that's going to work. So I'm curious to see how it works. Uh, I'm. I was first. I was very negative about that. I'm less negative now, thinking about it and kind of like, you know, what stuff when I've modded, you know, things that I had to fix, mistakes I made, tried to troubleshoot stuff. Um, and usually it was all user error. So 
it'll be nice to have some hundred percent user radar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, moving on. Battlefield Two. Kind of disappointed about that. Battlefront Two. I'm sorry. What did I say? You said Battlefield Two. Oh, I'm sorry. Battlefront Two. Yeah. Okay. I'm just disappointed. It's it to me. It wasn't enough. It's just not enough difference. I, yeah, see, I'm I'm with you. Like what you said before uh, is like, I I want to be excited about this game, but I've yeah. been hurt before yeah. by uh by Battlefront, the original Battlefront. I mean, it was it was fine. Like I and enjoyed they, it, but they acknowledged that they acknowledged that there was problems with it, and the fact that they ate crow about that and said that they know that they made mistakes on it at the E3 thing. I thought it was pretty big of them, which. Between that and them saying that the DLC will be free, yeah. See, that, really that's a huge helped. thing. That yeah. really helped, but I'm still not going to go get it right off the bat. I am going to wait, and I'm I'm fine with that. I have no compunction to go get that right off the bat. No pre order. Nope. Not going to get in bed with them until I know what I'm going to get. Yep. Good call. All right, moving on. Um, oh, also too, uh, Battle uh, Front Two. I wrote down Battlefield, so that's my problem. <laughs> Battlefront 2 is they didn't I haven't seen enough campaign either. I wanted to see more of it. Uh so since that was a big thing, I didn't feel at least maybe I missed it. I just didn't see much. Is of there a it campaign at, on the new one? Yeah, there's supposed to be. That's the whole that was like one of the big things that they were pushing for and they did it, but they just didn't show much of it. Again, maybe I missed it in part of my viewing of the E3 content. So if I did miss it, correct me in the comments, please. Um and then Really, lastly, kind of comes on to something specific that leads to a bigger topic, which we have referenced kind of at the beginning or near the beginning, is the Destiny 2 coming to PC and Xbox and PlayStation. Yes. You know, all the dates have been confirmed for the release date, September 6th for Xbox and PlayStation 4, or Xbox One, PlayStation 4. PC is like October 20-something, I think. 24th um, i believe 24th, 24th. 21st okay. or 24th something like yeah that. so don't we i think i i think we'll probably put the we'll put the information out at some point uh betas are coming up next month um so or betas for the console at least playstation 4 of course gets it first then xbox then it's open and then it's gone so get in try it out um but part of part kind of part of that well, the reason why i list that in kind of my disappointment area is just kind of how the destiny 2 like the content's locked like it 30 frames a second other games have done it higher and i understand that there are technical limitations to that um it is kind of frustrating that it's just i guess can't be done and maybe that's not a developer issue maybe that's just a hardware issue but i'm still kind of frustrated about that i'm also frustrated about the exclusivity that is coming with this again with with the exclusives that are that are coming forward for the playstation 4 that's going to negatively impact the Xbox One users, which Mike and I primarily are, and PC users, which Mike and I primarily are. Yeah. Um, and the thing, and the, that's kind of goes the bigger picture I was talking about with exclusives. There's two different types of exclusivity, and I think one of them is good. Having exclusives like uh, God of War, uh, Spider Man, it allows the the studios to to know that machine and to build the game kind of like we talked about earlier with the Xbox one thing to run that game all the way out on the console to go as far as it can with the capabilities and to really make it look as good as they can. And that does suffer when you have multiple items, just like we were talking about the games with between Xbox one, the S and the X, you know, they have to build for the lowest common denominator and try to optimize from there and being able to have exclusives just on the Xbox or just on the PlayStation yeah, it stinks for us, but also I think overall you get a better experience. So in my brain, I kind of pegged it as a positive thing, even though it has negatively impacted me quite a bit. Being an Xbox One user with all these awesome PlayStation games, I have missed out on already. My for, my, oh, my my thing with exclusives is I hardly see anybody talk about exclusives in a positive light. It's almost always negative. Like, it always comes off as a punishment rather than a reward. Um, like, it's almost like, uh, you know, like, the Destiny stuff. It's almost like the exclusives for Destiny are, are almost like a punishment for not having a, a, a PS4 as opposed to being a reward for having one. 
I, I agree. And that's the, and Destiny 2 highlights the second category because this is not a game being optimized for the PlayStation. This is a game that has gated content that was purchased by Sony to delay other people from enjoying the game. And that's the thing that I hate the most. Or if you're, if you're going to do exclusive stuff, don't make it like strikes and campaign missions and weapons. Make it like emotes skins and skins yeah. and like shaders and maybe maybe you get a different sparrow or something like that like yeah d- don't that, make it I'm the other stuff that. yeah the other stuff is where it, it kind of it just makes you like for me it makes me go like well i feel like we need to play it on ps4 now because especially with having a youtube channel too where we, we're going to want to express like you know our feelings on the game we're going to have to do that if we don't do it on the PS4, we're, we're not going to be able to do it as a whole. We're going to have to just do it as whatever pieces are available to us. So hey, that that's no. how I kind of look at it in that aspect. No, I, I get and I, yeah, I get the point that you're making with that. With the the exclu- for, the, for me, the exclusivity is just the fact that Sony paid Bungie enough money to stop us Xbox and PC users from enjoying the game the same way they want their players to do it. And I get Sony's point of view from doing it, but overall I dislike Bungie for making the agreement. And you know what? They probably needed the cash. I I have no doubt because when they split with Microsoft, Microsoft dumped them and moved over to three, four, three. So yeah, that was their focus. So I, I get that what Bungie had to do. Um, and, you know, I don't like it. I mean, there's still gated content that Xbox One users have not got for the original Destiny, and the Destiny 2 beta comes out next month. Yeah. Like, what? So, what, are they going to play the beta? I, don't, I mean, maybe the beta comes out before the gated content. How does that, like, how does that work? Yeah, I have a game that I own right now, but the replacement to it is uh, the beta is coming out next month, and I haven't gotten all my stuff yet. That That makes me mad, and I'm not even playing Destiny right now because I was so annoyed <laughs> by that stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I'm excited for Destiny 2, but I do not like that type of exclusivity. Again, I think in my example I made originally about like Spider-Man and God of War, I get that. As an Xbox user, I don't like it because this, I I mean, I started off with the PlayStation 4. I switched to Xbox because I missed some of that core Xbox-ality. But I have missed out on a ton of games that I really want to play and a bunch of games coming up that I really want to play. And... Just over. I mean, I agree with Mike. I th- I would like to be playing on the PlayStation Four, and I don't think that the exclusives on Destiny is the main reason why. But there's whole games, Horizon Zero Dawn. Nope, haven't played that. Persona Five, haven't played that. Do I want to play Spider Man? Yup. Yeah. God of War. Yup. Last of Us Two. Double yup. <laughs> so, yeah, it's frustrating. It's frustrating being a gamer who you just don't have, you have the redheaded stepchild. And again, this all comes back to my beef, my original video I made about the Microsoft thing. They're not pursuing that. I want good games, really good games. Xbox doesn't have that for me. They have an awesome console, but... They have an awesome console for playing Netflix. Yeah, and to play Anthem in 4K at 60 frames a second, I don't have a 4K TV. I don't have a 4K monitor. I don't plan on getting a 4K monitor. I'm at it. I'm not going to play Anthem in my living room with my 4K TV that I don't own yet. Yeah. So for me personally, and I'm really specific, for me personally, the 4K X or the 4K X, <laughs> the Xbox uh, <laughs> Scorpio doesn't matter because it's, you know, great 4K. Make it 8K. Make it 16K. I don't make care. It, it make it 24K. Do. Okay. You got me at that. I can't turn that to 4K. <laughs> yeah, but. That's- yeah. Yeah. O- overall, I mean, I really and like really, I have been really reconsidering being an Xbox user. It's not just from this E3, but this again, this just stirred the pot like it did last year. Stirred the pot. But I was like, man, all these cool games. I really want to play them. You know, they're still not coming out till next year, but hopefully. But yeah. uh, I want to play them. I want to play Hidden Agenda. You know what? That may not last forever. I'm okay. I want the experience. I want to have, I want to make memories. I played The Last of Us. My wife bought that game for me. And I always remember that game because of her, because she got it for me as a gift. 
and it was such a good game. I have so many memories, both good and bad, like being scared in the game and being involved in the storyline. Or the first five minutes of that game and like, you know, trying not to get your feel goods hurt. (laughs) Yeah, it's such a good game. And I want to play that, and I just can't do that on the Xbox One. It really stinks. I just don't, there's no, I mean, I love Halo 5. I'll play that. I'm going to, I mean, I'll always have an Xbox because the Halo franchise is near and dear to my heart because I have that connection with it. But I don't, you know, the exclusive, like, I have to make, you got to make a choice at some point, so. Anyway, that's my rant about exclusives and that. It sounds like you and I are kind of on the same page about that, so. Yeah. Well, uh, I, I think that for me that wraps everything up. Are you good? Yeah, I think I'm good for right now. Okay. Well, uh, if somewhere, somewhere yeah, negative yeah. emotions out. Yeah. Uh, well, if uh, if you guys have anything else that you want to add to the conversation, feel free to put it in the comments. Um, Please. If if we have enough uh, conversation about it, we'll we'll you know we'll we'll rework our opinions and maybe do a follow up video if we have any change of hearts. Yeah, convince uh, us if we're wrong. Let us yeah. know. Yeah, I, I'm 100 percent fine with that. I'm curious. You know, we could be wrong. We could be misinformed. We could be dummies. Well, we're definitely dummies. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you guys, uh, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like, uh, subscribe to our channel for more content, uh, probably doing some more videos like this as time progresses. Um, and, uh, until next time I've been Mike, that's been Dark and we've been terrible gaming and you have yourself a terrible day. Bye everybody. Thank you so much for watching and supporting our channel. If you enjoyed this video, click right here for our latest upload or click right here for another episode and click our channel icon in the middle to subscribe.